This week on QDL, we take a look at Nikon Metrology's line of stereo microscopes. Want to find out more? Join us in 30 seconds. Welcome back to Quality Digest Live. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And with us in the studio today is Lee Bazella, a technical sales rep with uh, Nikon Metrology. And we're going to look at a line of uh, uh, one microscope out of a line of series of microscopes from um, stereo microscopes, I should say, from Nikon Metrology, right? Correct. And what do we have here? We have a SMZ-1270i. Uh, it's one of a range of like six stereoscopes that we offer. It's kind of mid-range, so we offer some that have a larger zoom range, some that have a smaller zoom range. The 1270 means it's 12.7 to 1. Uh, the zoom is actually 0.63 to 8x. So, for example, if you put 10x eyepieces in there on the 1x objective, it's 6.3x to 80x. Okay. If you put a 0.5 objective in there, it's going to be 3.3. Uh, 3x to uh, 40x. Okay. Put a 2x objective on there, it's going to go uh, 12x to 200x. Okay. So you can vary the, uh, uh, the range where it's going to be depending on what configuration you have, whether the objectives or maybe you want higher uh, magnification eyepieces. Okay. And, and these, are, uh, these are all manual mi microscopes? These are uh, manual up until uh, we get to our uh, high-end one. We can get motorization on the zoom and motorization on the focus. Okay. But uh, this one is manual focus, uh, manual zoom. However, it does have the I stands for intelligent. So we can hook up a, a USB cable to the zoom body, to the computer, and through our uh, Nikon imaging software elements, it'll uh, keep track of what zoom level you're on and in this case, we have two objective lenses. We have a dual nose piece, so you can switch back and forth. In this case, I have a 1x and a 0.5x, okay. so you can switch them around, uh, and it'll you know, keep track of what uh, lens you're on in the software as well. And this is good for if you have a scale bar on here and you want to see what the uh, rough distances are. You can take measurements in the software as well, but it is a stereoscope, so it's okay. not going to be you know, super high accurate measurements. It's just going to kind of give you a reference. Right. Um, and all our uh, stereoscopes are very modular. So on this one, we have a, a ergonomic tilting uh, trinoc with 10x eyepieces. If you didn't need a camera, you could get this with just binoc without the trinoc port. Okay. Um, or if you didn't want necessarily need the ergonomic feature, we got fixed uh, angled eyepieces as well. Um, we have a, a five and point. It, and that's modular, me. or is that built into the? That's built into the. This the... trinoc is modular in the fact that it'll go on other zoom bodies. Okay, so okay. The, this trinoc, a binoc, uh, and the the fixed trinoc, okay. uh, fixed angle trinoc, will go on uh, different zoom bodies. Okay. Um, on this particular uh, model, we have a, a five point nine uh, megapixel uh, camera, uh, CMOS chip, USB three, okay. um, uh, very high speed uh, camera. So you can zoom up and, and be in real time. It's, there's not any delay when you're zooming or having to move the part around to inspect different parts of it. Okay. Um, so this is a, uh, what we call a standard upright stand. It has coarse and fine focus. Uh, we have a, a stand that, that has just coarse focus on it if you don't need the, the fineness of you know, the lower mags. Sure. Uh, we also can put these, if you need a transmitted light, we have transmitted light stands. Uh, we also have boom stands. So if you have large parts on a table and you wanna move that part around underneath the stereoscope. So those are kind of three different stand op options that we offer. Uh, as far as illumination is concerned, we have a ring light on here with an LED light source. Uh, we have options for uh, halogen light sources as well. You can uh, use what we call these goosenecks, so sure. you can aim your uh, light wherever you want. It's gives the same type of uh, connection for the LED light source. Oh, so you just you would just we've got the box back. You right. would just un, uh, 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 in this case you would just detach the ring light, remove that plug plug uh, the business end in here. 
into the uh, uh, into your light source. Correct. And, and if you wanted to, to have both a ring light and fiber oh, guide, sure. you okay. can get two light sources. And, okay. and, and like I said, uh, and the, the, another option is there's a, a coaxial illumination. There's okay. a, a unit that sits between the Trinoc and the zoom body that has flexible light guides. It actually adds a 1.5x uh, magnification, but that sends the light through the objective, so it pinpoints it on a spot uh, on the on the part itself. So it's good for high mag, we can get specific uh, locations, specific features. The ring light gives you a more uniform light over your part, and the fiber bundles let you direct the light, even if you want to get somewhat, some people would call dark field coming light in from the side. Okay. So it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like there's, you, you have like a, a, a base unit, and then you can just keep adding all sorts of different options onto it, right? I mean, this thing looks, sounds like it's really meant to be really expandable. Exactly. They're, they're very configurable um, depending on your budget or your application. Um, you know, some people get everything on them because they have a lot of different things they want to do. Some people just want to look at uh, the same part and, you know, only want to go to ADX. And so that, okay. that'll meet their needs. Um, as I mentioned, we have two uh, objective lenses on here. Now, uh, I would have to take the ring light off to uh, put it on the 5X, but basically you just rotate this uh, and put the other objective oh, in okay. place and you can take the ring light off or if you had the fiber bundles you wouldn't need to okay. um, but that's uh, a nice way to get a, an a extra zoom range because now you're going from basically uh, 3x all the way up to 80x okay so, so sh show us what it looks like here on, on on the screen so this is our elements software um, as you can see we're looking at a, a, a live image of this circuit board and I can zoom up and you can see on the software here that where the um, it's actually showing the zoom increasing on the right hand side there. And okay. you can see the uh, scale bar increasing as on we go bottom. up okay. in, uh, in focus. I mean, up in zoom. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. And then as we get there at the highest zoom, and it looks kind of dark, you come over to the camera controls and you hit uh, auto exposure, and it'll brighten it up. And if that's too bright, then you can uh, manually lower the exposure because the exposure is trying to brighten these darkest areas and it kind of oversaturates right, right, the bright yeah, areas occasionally. Yeah. Uh, and this camera is, uh, has two uh, uh, resolutions. You can uh, lower the resolution to get a faster refresh rate when, if you want to look at the live image and then still capture it in the uh, higher resolution. Um, but actually this camera I find has a nice refresh rate even at the highest resolution. Um, we have auto exposure and then we have continuous auto exposure. So that might be something you want to use for this. So as you go down, it'll adjust the auto exposure. Oh, just does, yeah, it does on the fly. Okay. Yep. Um, the other things that are nice here, uh, you can, as I mentioned, you can see the, uh, the different zoom levels here. And then when you uh, rotate the nose piece, it shows you it's on the 0.5x now. Okay. And it'll adjust the, the scale bar for that as well. Now, is one of the is one of the additions on this is is on any of these models is the ability for autofocus or is this strictly manual focus? It's strictly manual okay. focus. You can get motorized focus with uh, the higher end uh, stereoscopes. Okay. But it's, it's but manual, but it's motorized. It's, it's motorized in the fact that you have a control, you know, right, uh, right. That, uh, so that it's it's not autofocus. The depth of focus for stereoscopes is too big, big oh, okay. really for okay. autofocus to work. Okay. Um, some of the other things here in the software, uh, annotations and measurements. So if um, you want to take a, a measurement on this uh, pad right here, this resistor can actually do a, 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 a digital zoom with the mouse. Okay. And then just pick one of our measurement functions here. Oh, okay. And then you can uh, burn that onto the image, uh, save it as a TIFF, a JPEG, a bitmap, um, whatever you prefer. And then you can put, actually put um, uh, annotations on here as well. Now, you know, um, actually, when you measured that line, did did I see you do a, a, a start and an end, or did it detect? No, I, it's me. It's the users. Okay, it's the user. Okay, and right, end, yeah. okay. And there's different... Uh, uh, methods of taking measurements here. It's a, a point to point uh, and then a simple line, which is what I did. You can okay. do horizontal line, vertical lines. Uh, you can do areas. So you want to see what the area of this is here. Oops, I grabbed it the wrong spot. There we go. Oh, okay, sure. And that can give you the area of that. Uh, yeah. 
and and circles and uh, with r radius and diameters. Um, so, and, and it puts all this information into this uh, spreadsheet, which you can then export to Excel. So is this is this mostly used for for visual, essentially for visual inspection? I mean, this stereo microscope that's typically... Yeah, so there's a couple things. If you get the lower models with the, a lot of working distance, people actually do some uh, uh, work under there, sure. some okay. soldering or, yeah. or whatever. And then, obviously, it's just inspecting. A lot of people do inspecting. And that's usually pe people on, in, the, in the lab or on the uh, floor. And then engineers will come and want to take images of what okay. they're inspecting and, and keep records of the, of the things that they're inspecting. And then you said then you can you can output uh, you can output the the data that you've taken. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can export the all the measurements you take into Excel. You can put them into a report as well. Okay. And then that report could include. I'm assuming it also includes like a, a snapshot or a yeah, picture exactly. of, of yep. the image. Can, okay. Yeah. Yep. Images yeah. and any uh, measurements you've taken. Uh, what other options are available? I mean, you've mentioned uh, the the trinoc, the binoc, uh, whether this is tiltable or not, light different light sources, um, motorized in, in some of the in some of the frame sizes. Um, any other options you can get on this? Just the the different zoom bodies uh, okay. really determine uh, what your you know ultimate goal is, uh, the magnification level that you need. So we have uh, uh, seven forty five which is a, a 7 to 1 zoom ratio. We have an 800, 8 okay. to 1 zoom ratio. We have an 18, 18 to 1, 25, 25 to 1. So it depends on what your zoom range uh, requirements are. And a lot of the uh, other components are kind of interchangeable on, on the different microscopes, different stereoscopes. And, you know, anytime somebody brings, brings their equipment into the studio, I, I always kind of the standard question I ask is, so stereo microscope, um, a lot of people make stereo microscopes. Sure. Uh, obviously, this has got Nikon optics and stuff, which puts it at a certain level already. But what what makes this what makes this this line maybe stand out from uh, from other brands? Well, I think this particular model, the twelve seventy i, is the ability to read the um, zoom level okay. and, through our software and the the nose piece. Um, and you can offset this uh, nose piece to use a single light path to do. Um, what we call extended depth of focus imaging. Oh, okay. So you can use the software to capture a, uh, an all in focus image. Oh, really? And, okay. and usually in stereos, if you don't have this capability, when you turn this, you can see there's some shift. Yeah. Uh, so you can take that shift out by just looking uh, uh, down the uh, center okay. of the objective. Okay, uh, well, Lee Bozella, uh, Nikon Metrology, thanks Thank for joining us in the studio thanks today. Thanks for having uh, us. Sure, and again, this was the, uh, the SMZ1270i stereo microscope. Uh, if you want any more information on it, you can just go to the Nikon Metrology website. We have the link underneath the player page there. Look up more information on uh, Nikon microscopes, uh, other Nikon equipment, it's all there. So a lot of great, fantastic equipment from Nikon on the website there, so check it out. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and we will see you at the next Quality Digest Live. So long.